So Tammy Haddad, um, as you may know, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, she has been a TV executive. She's been she's done everything from Hardball to Larry King Live uh, to the Late Late Show. She has been a consultant on Veep. Um, you, Yes, I was going to say, that's Shiv, in case you can't see. Um, and so she is going to talk about what she does here in D.C. She knows everybody. Um, and I think that this will be a really interesting session. And I'm sure that you all will have lots of questions. So I'm going to just get out of the Thanks. way. Welcome, Tammy. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Hi, guys. How's it going? Am I bright enough? You know, when uh, Ronald Reagan was president, all the women reporters would wear red because, you know, Nancy Reagan loved red. That's not why I wore blue, but uh, <laughs> I was trying to make up a good excuse. Um, I'm glad to meet you guys. It's all in your hands. There's all kinds of things going on in journalism. I'm from probably a different side of the business than most of the people that you guys have met because I'm more of a talk show producer, shows, news shows, that are really talking shows, you know, so we're talking about like hardball, um, election coverage. I work what now. Is anyone here from Gray TV? Do you guys know Gray TV? Are you Kong? I know Gray. Okay. Uh, Gray TV is a local station group. Um, I worked for the Washington Post for a long period of time. You know, the whole industry has, has changed. Oh, my two uh, is changing and it's really in your hands and you have this incredible opportunity. And I was really glad I was asked to come because I do feel like there's a huge failing in beat reporters and you're all beat reporters, right? You're all in the Hill. No, where else? White House, Pentagon. Oh my God. Best job ever. Right. How long have you been there? Yeah, uh, trail, like I do a little bit of like kind of campaign trail field. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How'd you work? Where do you work? Vox? Fox. Fox. Fox News? Yeah. I worked at Fox News. I did this Sunday show. It was really fun. Roger Ailes actually had, and I know this might be controversial, Roger Ailes gave me some of the best advice that I ever got, which was when you, as a reporter, when you think about something, do it then. Because you know how people always make lists? I'm going to make a list. Go out and get it. But the reason I'm, I'm really glad to, hear, to be here is to talk to you about the importance of relationships. And I don't want anyone to roll their eyes, but I think it's a real mistake, especially in the we live in now, that you call someone, you don't call someone, you text them, sorry, too much texting going on, and you don't really have a sense of them. And I do think, especially in the halls of Washington, that you want people to respect you and know that you think what they're doing is important or worth your time, right? So those relationships are really important. If you ask me who I think the people that m that move up and the people that stay where they are, I would say it's always on relationships. I don't care what part of media you're in. What happened is the super hard news where you just write a story, say, you know, like, by the way, that Jen Easterly, she's a genius. You say you're writing about cyber and you talk to her, right? And you don't follow up with that relationship. You need to stay on the phone with her. You have to go back to her. You have to try to be in the room. Being in the room now is where everyone gets everything. And I know it's a pain in the butt. I did not want to get all this dressed up for you guys. <laughs> I was on the Zoom, you know, and getting out there. And especially when you're talking about uh, members of Congress. So I've worked from like the hottest places to like places you've never heard of. And I can tell you, everyone in Washington wants respect. They want you to hear what they have to say. Everyone is here because they know something. Everyone, as Pamela Anderson once said to me, White House Correspondents Weekend, everyone wants their story told. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Whether it's for a cause, or for you know the nation, whatever it is. So I, I, I really want to start off by saying it's important that you do that. It's important that you keep the list. I want to tell you about the old days, the thing, last thing you want to hear too. When um, iPhone started and you had contacts and they had a, they had um, a maximum of 5,000 contacts and people like me lost their emails, lost contacts, you should have hundreds and get thousands of contacts. Every person you deal with 
you should hold on to it. You should stay in touch with them. If you look at, like, if you're ever anywhere with Bob Woodward, he's talking to 25 people. Um, I don't know. Were you guys probably too young during the O.J. Simpson trial? I was producing this show called The Late Late Show. It's James Corden now. Anyone ever see it? It was a different guy then. It was more of a news show. Don't ask me. But... Um, <laughs> We used to have um, Dominic Dunn, who was this great writer, you know, talking about murders. And every night he would leave the O.J. Simpson trial and go and have dinner with Nancy Reagan. Twice she comes up already. Nancy Reagan and all of her friends and Beverly Hills and then come on this show. And we were kind of a secondary show. And I want to talk to you about the food chain of media in a minute, in a minute, in a minute too. So we were not the first show. But at Dominic Dunn, this great writer would come in and he would treat me the producer, as if I were like the most incredible, the most interesting person. He'd sit there and talk to me the whole time and not like other fancy guests on the show. Bill Maher was in the building, like none of those people talked to me. Okay, when his book came out, you know what he wrote? All of his stories he got from the producers and Valley Parkers. By the way, Valley Parkers know everything. You should know that. <laughs> What does that tell you? You've got to, you really have to engage with people and you have to show them by how you look at them and how you think about what they say and don't interrupt them and don't tell people you're smarter than they are. If they're telling you something, listen carefully, you know? And the other thing I do think that's failing is um, that you have to ask the follow-up question. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like a lot of people are phoning things in. They don't know how much you actually care about their answer, right? If you watch TV shows, right? And they're, you know, and the great Anderson Cooper, he's doing interview, he asks a question, he asks the same question twice, he gets a completely different answer. Why is that? Because we're all sort of programmed. I would tell you that as um, a talk show producer, uh, people say, like, if you're at 60 minutes, you can say that. I never worked there. Throw out the first 20 minutes because it's all, you know, blah, blah. It's talking points. It's, you know, people's emotions as opposed to, you know, giving you new facts. Or like in the Larry King days, it was he, we would have interviews on his radio show for three hours. Trust me, by that third hour, these people told you everything they weren't <laughs> supposed to say. It was so good. It was so good. But, you know, you need to think about, you need the psychology of the, the person that you're talking to. The other, the other larger note is go after everyone. Okay, so you're, wait, Naomi, you're at the White House? Yeah. And I'm sure they say no to you every day. By the way, they say no to me every day. And I don't care. They've been saying no to me for years. And then I keep asking, and then I could keep putting their other people on. And don't ever, like, Jenny Easterly is you know, not the top person there. She is a top person there. And maybe your editor is saying, nah, we don't really care that much today. But if I were you, I would go talk to any administration official. I would talk to any member of Congress. And it's up to you get to get something out of them. Because if they're going to be out, that means they have something new to say. So that's your job to go and to go and get it, really, I think. Um, what else can I tell you? The other thing is, that you need to watch what other people are doing. I call it the media food chain. Like all of you, I'm sure you have lovely jobs, but you'd like to make more money. Maybe, you're, how many of you are on TV already? Want to be on TV? Why? They give you even more money. And, um, and you want to advance your career. You all want to win Pulitzers. You want to get Emmys, right? Am I right? Do people want to get awards? I still do. Why not, right? Well, how do you get that? You know how you get that? It's hard work, sure. But you have to really think about what is happening on that subject matter or in the community, right? And you can't just say, I've got the best story in the world or I've got this piece of it. I've never seen anyone, I'm sorry, younger, meaning someone that hasn't been in the business for 10 years, remember to ask that additional question. You think you've got this new story and you are sure as heck right. But there's something else there, because if they're going to tell you this much, they're going to tell you the next thing. And that's what I mean about the food chain. And that's how you move up, because you ask that additional question. You ask the uncomfortable question. You ask three uncomfortable questions. You talk a little bit about yourself. You say, you know, 
I never thought that I'd be sitting here with Eric Swalwell. All right, I just picked him. Because <laughs> that's the most likely guy I'd be talking to, right? Because he does a lot of interviews. And now that we're here, okay, you see what I'm doing? I'm making, all of you who are writing down are now looking at me. I've slowed down my language. <laughs> she might say something important. Pay attention to all that stuff, right? Because they do have something additional to say. And you also want people, the other thing, the other thing I would say is the people that move up like that are 10 years ahead, they always say the same thing. If you have anything going on, give me a call. If you're, you know, anything you're working on, let me know. My door is open. You have to say that. I don't care if you're low man on the totem pole. I don't care if you're five years into it. You always leave people knowing they should call you first because the other person's saying that. And TV people are vicious. We are the worst because we want to win. Number one, we want to win. Number two, we want to kill everyone else around us so they don't get our job, okay? And if you don't have that point of view, don't waste your time in TV. But I would actually say the rest of it, it's funny you're at Fox because I started in local news in Pittsburgh and I came here uh, to produce Larry King's radio show. And guess how I got my job? Because every day I talked to the White House, couldn't believe they were talking to me from this radio station in Pittsburgh, because the car administration believed in radio. Those days, radio was 90% conservative now. It wasn't then. And every day in the top 20 markets, they would give guests out. Assistant secretary of blah, 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 or whatever it was. And then you'd get a big guy. I got President Carter, of course. <laughs> but... Um, uh, that that was you know so that was a completely different time but as you look at it you see that there that that it changes and when you talk to the person that's the assistant secretary and then they're going to move up but the other thing that happens behind the scenes is the comms people say well wait a minute they talked to my person so back to gray tv so gray tv is a local station group we have five reporters in dc oh and by the way today launching a national streaming channel local news live you can look it up <laughs> and um, and that's another point too and that's what I want to say you have more opportunity than ever because it's it's not just the great Tom Brokaw or the great Tim Russert the great Andrea Mitchell I'm an NBC person CNN person um, Bernie Shaw whatever these people it's not one person that represents a news organization it's much flatter so wow, what that does for all of you. For example, for Gray TV, this streaming channel, NBC has the streaming channel, right? CBS has the streaming channel. All of you guys, if you're not going on TV there, mistake. And if no one's calling you, you go call them. Call the bookers and say, hey, I just got finished talking to Eric Swalwell. I'd love to come on and talk about it. Know your industry. They're no different than you. I know I'm making TV a big deal because I think it is. It will help you in your growth. I'm not saying you have to go there. I'm saying that people take, management takes, reporters. You're laughing. Are you laughing? It's okay. You can laugh. Right? But it's true. They take you more seriously. Well, you're on TV, right? People comment. They know. White House will talk to you more. So take advantage of that. But just be aware of that atmosphere around you. I don't want to keep talking. I want you guys, I could tell you a million stories. I want you guys just now start asking me questions because I really want to try to be helpful and move you guys to the next level. Although it seems like you're doing pretty well. <laughs> so who is the first question? There you go. What's your Stand up and say your name. I'm a TV girl and tell me where you're from. Come on. It's the Hardball College Tour again. Come on. Hello. Hi. It's Christian Hall. Hi, Christian. Uh, I'm from Bloomberg News. Bloomberg. I mean, yes. I work for Bloomberg. I saw that in your bio. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm an By the way, policy. the number one more news, right? The largest news bureau yes. in Washington, D.C. See? Okay. Yeah. What are you covering? Uh, so I'm a national politics reporter. Nice. So I like, cover campaigns. Elections. How long have you been there? Since August. I used oh, to work great. at Punchbowl News. And oh, I cool. I remember seeing you at like some of the parties. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so my question is, 
for, I'm at Bloomberg, I want to do more television. You know, Bloomberg has Bloomberg TV, they have streaming. Um, how do you do that? Like, what's the best way to make like a compelling argument to be on TV when you Are you talking about internally writing? or externally or both? Internally. Okay, internally. internally at Bloomberg, which is very different than the other places, I would say, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, and I mean, you need to go talk to the head of TV and you say, I forget who it is now, it's a new person. And you also talk to your bureau chief, Peggy, right? Yes. And you say to her, because you need advocates, you got to find advocates in your newsroom and say, you know, I'd really like to do, I'd really like to do some TV. I've, um, and here are my stories, but what you need to do, and this is for everyone, here's my three areas. Now, especially if you're talking about politics, you have to really be clear on what you're covering, right? Like on what your, your unique way in, yeah. right? So is it candidates? Is it elections? By the way, for people covering elections, the most important thing, which people don't do, is you really need to talk to, I don't want to say pollsters, because that's not the answer. You really need to talk to people all over the country. You need to really get out there. I'm not saying go on the road. And go to, you know, they call, you know, Politico is something called the influence, the political influence. I don't know if you guys read it. Uh, the influence groups really know. It doesn't mean you quote them, but, you know, the Teamsters, talk to the Teamsters. Talk to uh, the Koch brothers group. Um, that network is incredible. Talk to everyone. But what I would do, let me go back to your question. Go to Bloomberg and then have the stories. And here's the three areas I can cover. And then also anticipate. So... If you're following, you know, the um, labor department numbers, you know, if you have a story, try to do that. Here's the other thing, and this is another big TV trick. What is the most provocative thing you can say? I'm not saying factual. I'm not saying headlines, but I'm saying what's the most provocative part of yours? What's the newest part? It's news. It's got to be new. So don't rewrite the same thing or find that, you know, headline at the top. And that's how you sell yourself. Here's I, the three things I can do. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to say, I think one of the questions I had too was, I feel that I might have a story or an idea that I want to talk about on television, but I don't always know the appropriate person to speak oh, to because so, Bloomberg is just so huge. Right. And you can talk well, to they the just hired chief. this woman. This morning, you guys want to know. They just hired this woman, uh, Jessica. Sorry, Ed. yes. Jessica. Yeah. And that is her job. In every newsroom, I think, you guys tell me if I'm wrong, every newsroom has someone who's paid to book you on TV. Now, the truth is, they're at, like everyone else in the industry, they're doing a lot of things. But you need to go over and meet with them, and you have to say, I'm ready to go. And then the other thing is, get out and go and meet the producers, okay? And go to journalism events and, and, you know, and go and find the bookers and ask your colleagues, hey, who's the hardball booker? Who's the Morning Joe booker? Who's the person at CBS News, the 24-hour channel? What's it called? Just CBS News, I think, right? Speaking out. Okay. I mean, that's a place. I'll tell you, I sometimes go on as political analyst. It's now called Scripps used to be Newsy. There's Newsy, News Nation. All those guys are looking for places. And you know what if they say if they don't need you, you call back. Here's my story. That's another thing. Even uh, some of the most sophisticated, really high level reporters that have been along a long time, I can't tell you how many times I've said, why are you not sending your, you know, your columns out or your stories out when you write them? So like, do you guys know who Jonathan Martin is? He just went back to Politico. Like, J. Mart's like kind of top of the game. Every day he sends them out. Do you think that he really wants to do that? Would he rather go talk to a reporter? No, because if it's not in your email, you're not going to see it. He sends it to everyone. So you need to really push yourself. And I know a lot of people feel like, well, you know, I can't really do that. You know what? Go to another business because it's only going to get spread out more. Because I started to say, so... Gray has the streaming channel, the Bloomberg channel, whatever it is. You used to go straight up and you'd go to a network or you'd go to the New York Times or, you know, name the publication and you're like top of the game. But now it's flat and it's everywhere and you don't have to be there. So it's in your hands to, to build your relationships. Just in terms of, I feel like if I directly email the bookers for CNN or whatever who reach out to me, then my Politico booking team would potentially be annoyed. Them. 
I would copy them. Just copy them when yeah. I sense it? But see, okay. yeah, and the, and the other thing you do is that you can also get your reporter send, friend to send it to them. I think they'll be grateful, you know? I mean, I'm, I believe in full transparency. I don't do anything behind anybody's back. In fact, I'm annoyingly transparent. And I'll just say, I'm going to call them because I really want to do it. And you know what they'll say? Yay, go get it. You know, it, it really is important to do, but don't do anything behind anyone's back. I know I sound like a mom, but it's true. <laughs> um, so I'm Naomi with the Washington Examiner. I, you've overseen really like high profile interviews. What's your process like in terms of preparing for them? What's the best way to, I mean, you said like slow down and don't talk and then people will feel the silence. Oh, but yeah. Like, do you have a process in terms of research or oh, I guess you have other people for that or? No, I do it. Are you kidding? I, I had to write questions for Gary Palmer today, you know, the congressman, Gary Palmer. Anyway, um, I, uh, I think preparation, preparation, preparation. But I think you have to think about, actually, it's funny. I see you're with Insider. I really like Insider because it's kind of like sassy, but it always starts with like a kernel of something super new. Of course, they're different than some of the other publications because they've got to pull you in, right? Um, because the assumption, or at least this is my assumption, that you're not really there, as opposed to like Fox, where you know like Fox people look at all the Fox stuff. Insider, I think, is different. So I think you kind of look for, I think you look for that. And I, I got to tell you, when I read stories, I read the quotes. And then I kind of go back and look at the rest of it. So I think you got to really hear what people are saying. But I really believe, like my method is, what are the five most important questions that you wanted to ask them? And then I'll tell you what else I do. I read all of you guys. And then I look at, um, oh God, what's it? It's like Cowen, is it C-O-W-E-N? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? They're like industry analysts. This is for Congress. And I work for Bloomberg. Don't tell them I said that. You guys aren't really gonna put this up. But anyway, <laughs> Cowen, there's a couple different there's more than a couple, you know, these companies that analyze what's going on in Washington. I always go back to them and say, and by the way, they always say it in a much more clever way. Like, what is the most important thing? Because I'm a political producer. I'm focused more on the politics. So if we're talking about the economy or say we're talking about the new CHIPS Act that they're about to give out the $56 billion. So I'm looking at it this way and I look at, at them and they're looking at it how, it's how, how, business and investors are deciding, you know, what to buy. So they look at it differently. Insider does a little bit of it too. But this is, do you, do you guys know this? It's Cowan, it's um, Guggenheim used to do it. There's a ton of them. I do think also Morning Consult, they do some of it. Anyway, um, but I, I write the whole thing up and simple questions, simple, simple. And you know what the trick is on interviews? You have to say the questions. If these are not words that would come out of your mouth, then you shouldn't be asking the question. So in other words, you would say, and then you, the other thing is, like, I think it's a mistake. If you have 20 minutes, it's different if you have 10, right? If you're standing there with a, you know, you're waiting for the speaker to come out, it's a different thing. But I always, I, my trick is, I always let people say what they want to say. Like, get out your talking points, get me to the good stuff, right? Because by the way, they're doing it anyway. Because anyone here who thinks they're going to trick anyone into anything. Um, Betsy Fisher Martin, I don't know if you know her, she teaches at American University. She was the longtime executive producer of Meet the Press. And then I was executive producer of Hardball. Then we hosted our own podcast. Here was our line. You guys will love it. Instead of writing the questions, we're now asking it. Asking <laughs> it. It was true. But no, but Bloomberg stopped paying us, so we stopped doing it. But um, don't do anything unless you're getting paid, by the way. Too. Um, but I think that that's, I think you have to go back and look. Is it something that you can say? And again, what have I told you? The follow. It's the follow. It always works. Because think about how people talk to each other. The other big trick is sit closer to them than you probably should sit a little closer or sit back or you know take a drink of water you you know interviews there's two pieces two parts right so if you're out there 90 percent they only got 10 percent right if you pull if you keep it going keep it going and then you kind of pull back then you're giving them more room i mean i look at it as relationship really 
And that, that'll, I think that'll really, I think it'll really help you. And if you're at, like you're at the Examiner Conservative Publication, and I think you're going to expect them, they'll expect you to hit you on the head. They'll expect you will hit them on the head. And you go in and you're just like as sweet as pie, unexpected. You know, at like Politico, like, I mean, a lot of people don't like Politico. A lot of people love Politico. <laughs> I'm talking about being interviewed. I mean, all the publications, you can say the same thing. I don't mean to call you up. But Washington Examiner, it is it is true because I've heard people say to me, like, oh, what are they going to say? What are they going to ask me, right? Because, I mean, but it's cool. Washington Examiner, you know what? They're poking you. You want to be poked, right? That's your job. Where are you? Texas Tribune. You guys poke everyone. You're like, oh, this <laughs> National Journal, I mean, and I'm saying all this to you for a reason. This is how people look at you, because they, unless they know you. So you have to know that going in. The Hill, quirky, never know where they're going, right? <laughs> where else? I can't see. CBS News, come on. You guys are going to write it all down and then pick what you want, right? Anyway, um, you see what I'm saying? So they're, you know, they're coming in with, with certain assumptions. So if you can knock those down, just like you want to knock down the talking points, I think that helps. All right, who else has a question? Hi, uh, I'm Mariana with the Washington Post. Um, I just have an issue where I'm, I'm a peer, I, I write, I'm a, you know. Yeah, I think we've met. Oh, I think so too, because I was like, you look very familiar. You look, I was there for four years, <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, but yeah. I have this issue where I'm on TV and radio um, a little bit more, I'm on breaking news politics, so like all of the mess. And I have a big issue translating what I write into like a quick, you know, when I'm on panels or I'm in an interview, like a quick soundbite because I just want to tell people everything. So I was like, do you have oh, any advice on how to cut yes, that down? Don't yes. do it. <laughs> Here's my advice. I'm really serious. It is the biggest mistake you make. And um, I have this friend who just got a bigger job in TV. And I'm like, for God's sake, don't narrate your stories. It's horrible. No one wants to hear that. Well, listen, what you want to do, honestly, like I said, like Tim Russert, God rest his soul, all the biggies, they write it down and then think about it. What's the most important thing about it. Think about what I've just said. What's new? What's surprising? What's unique about your reporting? You need to do that, okay? It's really important that you figure that out because you're not going to get farther along and nobody is going to help you. See, there used to be people on TV that sort of trained you. You come in, oh, you're doing such a great job. And then they tell you three things you're not doing. They don't do that anymore. So, and the other, by the way, the whole TV part of it too, if you're going to go on TV, you better look like a million bucks. And this is probably not inappropriate, but not what you guys would say, but I am telling you, everyone is watching you. And if you're like, oh, the first time I did a Zoom, I'm like looking over here. I'm like a TV producer. People pay me to help them do it. I'm like, whoa, whoa, or whatever. You're not paying attention. You're shaking your leg. You got a necklace that bounces. Come on. Do you want people to hear what you're saying? Or they want to figure out like what's going on with your hair or something? Don't do that. You want to be taken seriously. Take it seriously. How you look on TV matters. And by the way, back to Nancy Reagan, red <laughs> outfits, you want people to remember you, right? Or say you're in a scrum on the hill, or when, especially when you go on the campaign trail, you know, you people will notice, you know, you're up. Yeah. Hi. Um, so I just want to, yeah, sorry. I'm Matthew. I'm with the text Tribune. Um, just want to start by saying Veep and Succession are two of my favorite shows oh my of God, all the time. Best. Can so, you believe I got to be, and I was one that made uh, that Veep especially accurate. Uh huh. Yeah. Because it's fun. <laughs> accurate is funnier. Yeah. So Seriously, I want to say the truth is the funniest thing out there. Yeah. I wanted to ask about, you know, what this relationship between Washington and Hollywood looks like. How did you marry it? What were the surprises on both sides? Um, and yeah, just walk us through that process. Um, I think it, again, relationships. Um, I, I got hired by HBO. It's funny. I was at the, um, I was at the, uh, British embassy at this party with John Meacham. You guys know John Meacham. He, I was his producer. I put him on TV and we were there, a Churchill event, of course, all very strange. And, um, we're standing in the hallway and the CEO of HBO, Richard Plepler, legendary guy was standing there complaining because he couldn't get Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks into the White House for, do you guys ever see the Band of Brothers? It was this incredible series about World War II. The follow was the Pacific. Here's the bottom line. 
the Obama White House would not let Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg in. And so Richard's like, I don't know what to do. And I said, I know what to do. And he said, why don't you work for me? I said, I've been asking that my whole career. <laughs> and then he, they hired me. And then of course I got them there and it was like incredible. Um, I should have put that photo up, right? <laughs> because there were the guys with the guns were there, you know, like whatever. Anyway, um, and so I got introduced to HBO and HBO is an incredible place. I don't know if anyone watches it. They're very, very careful. They're the most careful of any of the, any of the uh, organizations to make sure the scripts are accurate. So like on Game Change, I did LBJ. On all of these shows, um, not the comedies, okay, but it everything had to be exact. Part of my job was to take the director or star like Brian Cranston and take them to the various rooms right before January 6th, by the way, the, oh, has anyone seen the menu? Okay, that's the director of Succession. How cool is that? Anyway, he, um, I uh, took him around because they were the, he remember the hearings in succession about the uh, cruise ship? Take him around. And then uh, for Veep, which was a completely different story. So the idea with Veep was we bring the writers in every year. Um, they hired me because I knew a lot of people and I knew about people because I'd written questions. And, you know, we have to do all this research all the time for shows you know, you pick up a lot of info. Anyway, and I covered politics. So we would bring people into the, into the room and they would hear them talk. And so it wasn't really just the stories, but it was stories, but it was also um, how they spoke, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, you know, the you know, we're always talking about talking points, right? Like how they express their talking points. And then of course, all the silly stuff that happens all the time which, um, you know, which I would collect. So give me anything you've got. Uh, I'll take it with me. And, and, it, and then what happened was inside, and this was a new part from my experience, Julia Louis-Dreyfus was incredible. The writers, they were UK writers. Did you ever see the thick of it? So that it came from another show, which was much more mean, right? Like it was like, because it's British, it's got to be super mean. And the, the main character were, character was utterly unlikable. And Julia Louis Dreyfus and Americans, they don't go for that, like a vice president who's so such a you know nincompoop. She anyway, so you know, I learned about that process. So then you get hired on other things because people see that you know how it works and you're not annoying. That's a big thing in movies. You don't want to be annoying. Um, by the way, big time plug coming. Um, we have this show coming for HBO that I've actually been working on for five years. It's called White House Plumbers. Anyone heard of it? It's about the Watergate plumbers. Justin Thoreau plays G. Gordon Liddy and Woody Harrelson plays E. Howard Hunt. Can I tell you what it's like for three weeks with Woody Harrelson? I'll tell you outside. I can't do it with him. <laughs> we had so much fun. Um, Justin Thoreau, by the way, super brilliant guy. Um, really interesting. And, you know, people are really interested in Washington, to your, to your question. Um, you know, they, the HBO people come back a lot um, because they, it's, you know, it's, it's power. You know, it's, um, it's not really easy to understand um, what's going on, you know, what's important. So, so you guys have every opportunity to do that. Just don't take my jobs, please. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. Um, what, so, okay, can I just say White House Plumbers is coming in May sometime. Hey, uh, Hugo Lowe with The Guardian. Um, okay, having a British accent always helps. <laughs> Please fake it, fake it, fake it, fake it. always works, right, Hugo? 100%. Um, no, seriously, I think people pick up the phone because it's a different voice. Um, my, I guess my question is, what compels a network to pay for your appearances as a contributor, right? Like, okay. If I do, you know, let's say the documents, of it, like this is very like selfishly about me, but I'm just no, going to ask No, no, but this is for everyone. I'm, right. I should have brought it up. So if I'm, you know, if, if you do MJ three times a week for, you know, a month on the documents investigation, and then you do Steph Rule's show, you're doing prime morning and evening at some point, or, you know, even Joy Reid's show, right? How many hours are you going to give the network for free? before you turn around and say, hey, Jess Kodali and, you know, Jesse, you know, what are we doing? Everything they want. You give them everything they want. 
because the way those, the way the paid thing, first of all, they're all, almost all gone now. I mean, it's really been a change, a sea change in the last six months, but it'll build back up again in time for 2024. So this is the right question. I think it comes a different couple of different ways. One is if you write a book and become remarkable, like John Allen, you guys know John Allen, who's been around a long time. I'm sorry, I can't remember his co-host. But, and he aggressively is out there and he's also a critical thing that people don't get available. And he answers his phone. How about that? You cannot imagine how many people have careers because they answer their phone. Like answer your phone. Don't let it go to voicemail, seriously. Because let me tell you what it's like. Like I always worked on primetime shows, you know, like the biggest shows, but you next level down, right? Which you have to kind of fly, climb the flu chain. They go right to the next person because these bookers are so busy. They are terrific people. They work really hard. Okay. So that's one way, write a book. The other way is you become an expert on one thing like Mike Schmidt did during, um, not impeachment. I forget whatever. The Russia right, right that kind of thing. Okay. It's very hard now to get a paid, it's very hard to get a paid deal, but what, um, but you want to try, but I will tell you right now, there's nothing more annoying than get, than people asking you to get a paid deal. Okay. What you should say to producers, say you're on a lot and say, Hey, listen, if there's ever, an, this is what I would say. If there's ever an opening, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to be available 24 seven and I'd love to get paid for it. So you let me know. Now, let me tell you what the other side of being paid is. I can tell you a lot of people, all of you know, who are not on TV, why? They have contracts that say they have to be paid to be on. And when the cablers run out of money, it's mostly cablers, right? When they run out of money, you're not getting on. I can't tell you how many people don't get on because of that. So be careful what you ask for. <laughs> You know, it's so it's it just it just depends on who you are, on what's going on. It's really more about what's going on. But I really urge you to go on TV as much as possible. Well, I mean, as a follow up, then, you know, if you, you know, I do a lot of MS, right? Like, is it worth doing more MS or continuing the same amount of MS? Or would you do more CNN? And I kind of, would do in the both. same time slot. Right. I would do both and until one of you started, one of them started paying you because every time you appear, there's a potential of someone else. Here's the other thing, you know, that, as I said, you know, I'm not just saying it, the Hollywood people are looking at everything on TV all the time. If you look even, um, I, it, it was a big deal that Netflix did that Chris Rock special. Did you guys watch that? Chris Rock? It was really good. I only saw part, but, um, it, so television is changing so much, you don't know. But I, I mentioned News Nation. How many go on News Nation? You on News Nation? Pay attention to News Nation. The other way you get, honestly, that you get a deal is you get it through the talent. So if you become Joe Scarborough or Chris uh, Cuomo's best friend, that's another way to get in there. Okay. So okay, kind of just follow up on that as well. You know, since you're an EP at, at the network. Um, you know, some shows have their own things, right? It's like MJ has its own contributors. So how does that, and some of them were unpaid. So, you know, right. I know some, some folks who are quote unquote MJ contributors who weren't paid. So how does that work, you know, with that show specifically in relation to everything else? Because, you know, get on great with the, with the EPs and how many executive right, producers right. that show now has, but. Um, I, uh, on Morning Joe, Morning Joe is a little different because they've been around a long time. A lot of people only want to go on Morning Joe because it gets the message out and they're really busy people. They pick one show, you know, it, it could be another show. Well, I've ended up doing both. I ended up doing MJ and then also prime on the same day. Yeah. You want to do that. Yeah. You should do as much for you. You should do as much as you can. You definitely should. Cause by the way, the next step could be your own show. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not that big. A Stephanie rule was a guest on Bloomberg and um, they gave her, the show they you know let her be an anchor so um i'm jillian i'm with the sacramento b mcclatchy network uh area so i'm wondering once someone is in the chair particularly a print person who's come onto your show to talk about a story that you've been asked to what are your favorite things to see from that person once they're actually there um on air either for radio or tv and some of the least favorite things that you see people right like us do 
you should really have three points really to your point earlier please stop talking it's not going to work and um and you oh by the way big tip don't disagree with the anchor or you won't be back on morning joe or most of these other shows if you disagree with them then you don't have to say it well i disagree with you you know what i mean just make your point to the side i say that because that's not an ego thing that's a flow issue because this is all about flow you know you don't want to stop them you want them to keep going well that may that makes sense but let me tell you what i'm focused on and act dynamic nobody wants someone on their job that doesn't care why should i care what you say so i know not everyone has my personality i didn't start out this way you know but you have to think about it if you don't show the passion you have for your job why should anyone else okay don't talk with your hands either i do that is is do you find a difference between radio and tv um, yes for those yes 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 totally um you can't live on radio alone and i'm a radio person um radio is much more intimate um you have to have a nice rhythm you have you can't say um and honestly if i were you guys if you really wanted i would practice at home i would practice looking in a mirror i would practice with your iphone that there's no trick to this except practice yeah uh brian mesker with insider um got a couple questions first is i'd like to hear you talk a little bit more about kind of the details of like establishing relationships with bookers because i mean you're you said sort of yeah like get to know them but like How do would you it do be it? like literally emailing them every time i write a story because i you know I, I i write a story i put on twitter that's kind of it um and right. the second part's just like how do you see tv evolving because you know i know i understand that cable news especially is very important now but in my you age just want me to cry right no i mean no yeah, one you no do. one my age yeah, watches you it. do yeah you do yeah you do okay <laughs> um okay first question so i i've actually mentioned something important i should say more um hosts always go talk to hosts when you see them you know jonathan capehart you guys know jonathan jonathan got on tv actually he met me and then i introduced him to chris matthews and that's a, so when you see you know people on tv you should go and talk to them you should go and talk to the bookers there is a food chain of bookers there's now i think they're almost all the same there's a head booker then there's show bookers right you really need to figure out who's who and what's what and then executive producers. And, you know, like I was always an executive producer who booked, but you need to know, you know, I mean, who's, who's the player. And by the way, your reporters, you can find out, ask other reporters. They can tell you, you know, and you can always email the host. Hey, Bob Costa, you were great tonight on red and white. If you ever need anyone to talk about blah, 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 I'm your guy, or you didn't see your story. But to your first question, you, you should have a list of the bookers, and every time you publish a piece, I would send an email to them. Constant contact is what we use, but there's a million different ways to do it. And by the way, I would send it to your colleagues here. You guys will all rise or fall together. Sorry, you need to help each other. I'm serious. Kirsten Garris, Cox Media Group. Um, so I'm over here. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of picking off um, Brian's other question about just where local TV is going. That's where I am yes. right now, based in DC, yep. similar to Gray. Um, but obviously, with Gray starting their streaming service, News Nation is obviously trying to take over the world and also become 24/7. Where do you? Are, what are your thoughts on where that's going? Do you think that could be where local news goes? Yeah, actually, I'm so glad you asked that because I meant to go on about it. A lot of people don't think about local news. But I got to say, those reporters at, um, that are at Gray and at Cox and Hearst, do you guys know about, you know, there's so many station groups. They, I mean, there's no difference between, you know, writing for the Washington Post or, you know, write or, you know, working for a network and working for the local station group. You have the, I mean, you're talking to the same people. It's all what you do with it. Just keep growing and make your story stronger. I mean, from my point of view, a lot of the local news stories in DC could be stronger. I say a lot, but I may be wrong because I'm looking at it from a national point of view where local stations are looking at how's it gonna work in my market, right? So maybe what I'm saying isn't right, but I don't think there's a better place. It used to be at the cablers 
it, you, you know, you could go in at CNN at a lower level. Um, by the way, the other place I'd work in a minute is CNN.com. You move right over onto the TV side. Does anyone here work there? I don't, I don't know how they hire or anything. Well, no one's really hiring, are they? Oh, I forgot about that, the future. On the future of TV, while we're at it, um, separate from cable, you know, what about streaming, right? Because CNN Plus has is, is kind of died and MS on Peacock is no more. You know, they supposedly did very well with the J6 pre and post, but, you know. Here's the thing, okay. And Warner Brothers is a client. The problem with CNN Plus, forget all the other stuff, is you have an app that has CNN Live and then you were going to have CNN Plus. And my mother, she would have never found it, right? <laughs> Because she's looking for CNN. Well, why is it in a different place and all of that? Like, I wasn't there. I don't know who struck John's. But in the larger picture, anytime you're switching a job, you have to look at things like that. Not that anyone would have known. And Andrew Morris ran that. He's a friend of mine. Chris Licht, who's at CNN, is one of the best people I've ever worked with. CNN is going to be large and in charge. But to your question about the future of TV, um, the biggest problem that cablers, you guys probably know, is that... Um, the cable system operators, you know, they're, we're not getting, you're not going to get a fee. Um, and, you know, uh, CNN is guaranteed for two years. But, and then when we started Fox, it was, ten, we, Fox, for the first time, paid $10 a head. So CNN was getting like $2 for each viewer and Fox had to pay $10. Um, I think it's going to be more, you know, fraction. It's going to get smaller and smaller. I think places like, you know, Punchbowl and Puck and all these guys are going to grow a little. Vox is going to grow a little, but it's going to be so fragmented. Anyone that seems like, you know, says they know, they don't know anything. But where I see local news is getting more power is because they're not using network packages. They're, I'm talking about just news. They're not using network packages as much. They're using their own packages. If you watch Channel 4 here, NBC4, an NBC O and O station, at four o'clock, do you know what they run? NBC News Now, the streaming channel. So there's a lot of experimentation going on. And I don't know where it, it I don't know where it nets out because if you're a local station group, you're paying a network more than you got, more math than I like to talk about. You're paying them for their primetime programming and their news programming. Well, if you're if you're gonna do your own, right, then are you gonna be willing to pay that much? I mean, well, they're putting their money into streaming, which has nothing to do with you. I don't know the answer. Wait right here and then back. Um, Eleanor Mueller, I cover economics for Politico. And I want to circle back to what you said earlier about how you feel beat reporting is flawed right now. I mean, what are ways that beat reporters can oh, be better I'm, at what they do? Well, I, yeah, I think you have to be advocates for yourself. I mean, part of being on a beat is it's trudging. You know, you're it's like trudging along. You got to trudge along and you have so much to cover. And you have to cover whatever that story, especially in economics, come on. You have to cover that. So maybe you don't get to do more featurey kinds of things or things that would draw more attention to your report, your reporting, right? So you got to make it a little sexier, God forbid I'm saying that, but in some sort of kind of way, more importantly, you have to make sure other people know, okay? I've been covering economics for X amount of time. I'm an expert in financial services. Look, I don't even know what the other stuff is. <laughs> Whatever the other stuff is. I cover the Fed, whatever. You know what I mean? So you have to say it, or like at Bloomberg, like the big gift at Bloomberg always is the intersection of the economy and politics. It's always like a total sweet, sweet spot. They don't really talk about it that way. But you've got the same thing, really. It's just that you call it economics. And you've got great new owners. Honestly, you're going to do great. You know, I mean, I really feel like Axel Springer's brought more energy in and they want to do really well and they're serious. So that's, that'll help, right? Very German. I didn't mean it that way, but yes. No, 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 no. They're very structured. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, that I don't know, but I know they care about, you know, the actual uh, product. Not that other people don't, but, um, you know, because the whole thing about Politico, people treated Politico, especially in the early days, like CNN was treated in the early days. Oh, you're of the moment, Right. Your coverage is not of the moment. And really, their coverage isn't like that anymore. It's like, what happened in the last 24 hours that's really going to change my life? And by the way, and to that point, you guys should be happy about Twitter. Um, 
because Twitter means that more people know about politics and feel more comfortable coming into town and advocating for their cause or doing whatever they can, right? And um, they're paying attention to you more. I worked for the, you know, the News Media Alliance, they represent all of your operations. And um, it's amazing where the audiences are. They're much, it's much wider. And I think part of it's Twitter, like you can kind of figure it out. Okay, you're up. Uh, Bloomberg was good in that they got a media training consultant to come in for like reporters. Um, and I'm gonna be working with one. What's the best way to get the most out of that experience? I know that you mentioned earlier that practicing is really important, but in that type of training, what can I do to get the most out of it? Well, there's two things. One is being a good guest, like on a stand-up kind of thing. The other thing is more of a conversation, like when you're on Meet the Press or something like that, right? So that's two different things. And you want to talk to them about both of, the, both of those things. The most important thing in media training is that you look at videotape yourself. And by the way, every time you're on TV, you should look at it afterward, which is excruciatingly painful. <laughs> <coughs> but it really will make you think about it. Like, I thought, you know, oh, Miss Producer knows everything. Do this, do that to all of these people. And then when I, I hosted a show, oh, guys, get this. It was called the First Producers Club, and it was all TV producers. It was so TV producers would talk about what they do. Terrible guests. They, oh, my God. They were so bad. It was awful. And then, um, oh, and get this. They fired Billy Bush and hired me, if you can believe that. Like, and then he went to Access Hollywood. It was way before all this. And, um, and then the channel, which was right next to, it was right next to Union Station. It was bought by the Russian mob and they burned it to the ground. It was like, oh my God, that was my channel. America's voice is gone. Anyway, sorry, I got off track. All right, what were you guys asking me? Sorry. About media training. Like media training. So that's my yeah. point. So is it a conversation? Make sure they do that. Make sure that you look at the tape with them so they can point things out. Do you see like Washington Post Live, which is our live show whenever like big things happen. Um, do you see a market for that? Like who's watching this? Like I know that the New York Times has a Hulu. You're talking thing, to but... the person that helped build that yes. up. What are you saying, I, but my I'm, dear? I'm, I'm asking, Come on. Like, what's the live future journalism? of that? journalism? Do you think it's dead? <laughs> I don't think it's dead, but sometimes I'm like, what well, we're not promoting it enough. Well, that's another conversation. Yeah. Again, off camera. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I think it's, um, it's, it's a terrific opportunity. It's a terrific hosting opportunity. I don't know if you guys watch this. If you, by the way, this is a perfect thing to watch. You should. It's, um, it, we did like 15 a week when I was there. They're doing like seven or so now. Um, but it's, and it's, it used to be just like a few hosts. And then we said, well, what about, we got these great reporters, but you have to train people. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to be a great host on zoom at all. Um, and then you, you know, you kind of build it up, but there, you know, you have to practice and then you'll be, you know, good at it. But I would definitely do it. Haven't you done one? Why do I feel like you've done a couple? I've, I've been on a few, but just as oh, a Oh, you've been on Jonathan's. No, I'm uh, when Libby Casey hosts. Oh, Libby, you're talking about TV. I had nothing to do with that. No, so no, I'm talking about the, yeah, video, the video one. Yeah, so no, we don't there's two on. things at the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. There's Washington Post video and Libby Casey's very good She's, and she yeah. is someone to watch. And then there's Washington Post Live, which is the live journalism event. Oh, yeah. No, that's... And on, online. Yeah, that works. See, Fair now, yeah. you should go talk to Jonathan or Kathy okay. O'Hearn's the head of it and say, hey, I'd like to be on Jonathan's yeah. podcast. On fr It's on Friday, then it runs mm -hmm. as a podcast. So that's three reporters yeah. talking to um, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Kate Park. Yeah. Yes. Um, Janae Green, C-SPAN. Nice hey, to Janae. meet you. Hey, Janae. Hi. Um, Two quick questions for you, but I'll be super quick. Um, you talk a lot about relationships and relationship building. If we are in an environment like this or in an elevator, a brunch, wherever, and we get quick seconds to meet someone, what's your biggest advice? What do we say? How do we initiate that relationship? I talk to everyone. I would say hello right away. I have this friend who's super clever, and he said he, said he like, if he knows someone is coming, like, he just met... Um, Prince uh, William and Kate, I, he had like the best line. He made her laugh so hard. I can't remember the line. Anyway, and I was, and by the way, I wasn't invited, so who cares about him or his funny story? I would say something unexpected. People always love to talk about what they do. 
you know, so, and what they care about. So, you know, I, I would say something like that, but I'm, I'm really interested in what people are doing all the time. So I, for me, that's what works, but it has to be something that works for you. Whatever you do, do not talk about yourself. They do not care. No one wants to hear about you. That's my advice. Thank you. Even though I've done that, right? Like it's, you're shaking your head. Thank you for shaking. So I do know that part of, you know, part of growing, part of, of getting into kind of like TV and all that, um, even when you're writing, um, is knowing to sell yourself as a journalist. Right. Um, how do you do that in a way that doesn't, it's, it's not cringy and that it's not like, I don't know. Sometimes oh. I just find it diff difficult to just like sell myself like as a journalist and you don't, you don't want to brag or you don't want to sound like, okay, here comes this person again, like selling herself as a journalist, blah, 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 blah. Right. Blah. It's annoying. Yeah. That's a really good question. I guess what I would do if I'm on Capitol Hill and I want an interview, what I would do is I would send an email in advance and say, listen, I'm going to give you, I'm going to call you because I'd really like to interview so-and-so. Here's some of the stories I've recently written because that's what people look at. You know, that, that's how I would do that. And if you meet them, I would, again, talk to them about something they're interested in or something that they're doing. I know that sounds simple. And I think you have to really listen to what they say back to you. Um, but I don't mind being annoying. If three people ignore me, what do I care? Right? Because that one person may appreciate it and uh, tell you something unexpected or give you an interview. And by the way, when you're looking for interviews, I would go right up to that person and say, I really want to talk to you. I know uh, you've been working on cyber. I'd really like to give, you know, talk to you about it. You know, can I call you or can I text you or what's the best way to do it? By the way, P.S., get everyone's cell phone number when you meet them without fail. Here's the other thing missing in politics. Political veterans talk about this all the time. Where's the joy? You are out on the road. You get to talk to anyone. Anyone will talk to you. Make sure you show that joy. Wow, I am so glad to meet you. You know, I've been covering politics for five years and you, you know, your program, blah, blah, blah. You know, pop up. Because you're showing emotion. You show that you, you know, you care. And who cares what your colleagues think? You know, if, they, if you're more enthusiastic than the rest. You just want to win, right? That's how you win. Who's next? Um, you, you mentioned that you weren't always like this. Yes. Advice to yourself, <laughs> maybe your younger self or a few years yes. early in the industry. If you could tell her something from what you've learned, what would that be? Oh, God, that's terrible. What, like, I'm on the therapy table here now. <laughs> like, what the hell? Um, what would I tell myself? I think really all the things I'm telling you that I had to learn the hard way. And um, I, I, I don't know. I think the big lesson is you are what you do, right? So if you spend your time doing research or if you spend your time, you know, like hanging out with reporters, you know, like think about that. I mean, are you really, I mean, if you're going to walk the halls of Congress or calling people, you are what you do. Just recognize, is that a successful formula for you or should you, should you try something else? You know, like really what works? Does that make sense? James, uh, you talk in terms of developing relationships. Any advice for getting people to go from anonymous to on the record is the more you work through it? Because they all want to start anonymous. They all want to go on background. You know, that's record. really, uh, actually, I think that's a super question. And I think by just talking to people, you can move people over. I mean, because what's it all about? It's about trust. That's what we haven't mentioned here. But the trust factor on reporting is really important. And so that's why I think revealing a little leg, you know, like saying something about yourself that maybe is, you know, unexpected. You know, I've been in this way, not like something personally. I've been working on this story for three weeks and I can't get anyone to talk to me. Do you guys follow Julie K. Brown? Do you know who she is? She's a Miami Herald reporter. Yeah. She's the woman that got all those young women that Jeffrey Epstein abused to talk. It took her years by Miami Herald. You look at her Twitter feed. I like looking at some of these people's Twitter feeds and how they talk about things. It's different than 
I, I'm, as a reporter, right, like I would talk or forget all the personal stuff people say. But, um, and, and you can really see there's a lot of empathy there, you know, I mean, and um, relatability and just don't act like you know everything because the assumption is reporters think they know everything. And, um, and just like slow down, like I'm slipping down, look, look a little tentative. I don't think I ever look tentative because I look, I'm too big to look tentative. I got too much hair and you know what I mean? Like every, you like you have to know how you are like physically in the world too. Um, and, uh, but I think you got to try, I think you got to pay attention and, um, and don't ever try to beat your younger self. You're never going to know enough in time. It just comes later. In your estimation, what are the three things that make for a good White House correspondence in a party? <laughs> oh, I made the fatal mistake last year of doing an interview with Politico on audio. And I was so busy. I'm just blah, 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 kind of like I'm doing today. And I said, um, you shouldn't be talking to the people you know. You should be meeting other people. And then all weekend long, people are like, I'm doing what you said. I met three people. I met this person. You were so right. It's like, oh, stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> but I do. I met me. Stop talking. Uh, not that person. Yeah. I really think, again, like I feel it's a privilege to be where we are. Everyone that comes in for the correspondence dinner, they know they're in for it. Go and talk to them. I will tell you that Woody Harrelson and Justin Thoreau are the most fun people in the world, really smart and interesting. Um, Dave Bernad, did anyone watch Light, White Lotus? The producer White Lotus is coming in. Um, your guy, Mateus, is it Mateus? I always mispronounce his name. Who's the, the head of Axel Springer? Oh, Matthias. Matthias, oh, Matthias, okay. Doffner, <laughs> Matthias. That guy is really interesting. Um, I would go talk to, I would talk to all your competitors' bosses because let me tell you that history has been written of people that went and talked to someone at that weekend. That's, and in fact, oh God, this is bad. Um, last week, I, this woman wanted to have a drink with me. I kind of worked with her. I can't say who, one of my clients. And um, she's like, I just want to thank you because you invite, I host this big brunch for the Correspondence Dinner weekend. It's, uh, it's a garden brunch. Anyway, um, and she's like, I met another big person and she ended up leaving my client, leaving like a giant hole, but they met at my party. They never should have met. And she got this big job somewhere else. I'm like, don't tell people you met them through me. This is like not good for my consulting career. But yeah, go around, go around and talk to everyone you can. And by the way, get news stories. A lot of news stories come out of that weekend, you know, and, um, and people are there, you know, like, especially when on that floor, I go and I talk to everyone, even there are been there a million times. I always go, oh, I can't tell you guys this because I, I don't need, there's not enough space there. All right, I'll tell you. Go to the front of the room in the center because that's where the most important people are. You pick up a lot of good stuff there. I actually meant from a hosting perspective. But oh. That's also <laughs> oh, what do I look for a hosting? Can't you tell by now? Interesting people. Well, I, I met Fauci at the Garden Brunch last year, so. That you what? I, I met Fauci at the Garden Brunch last year. So, uh, oh, yes, right. interesting See, people, yes. Right there. But... That's right. Yeah. I mean, I think what, remember, it's the Correspondents Weekend is the only time that that um, media course together other than political conventions, right? So it's a real reconnection time. I don't want to say a reunion. It's when we're not competing against each other, right? So that's, that's nice. You know, the radio and TV Correspondents Dinner, I think, still happens the congressional dinner. So um, I would take advantage of those. Yeah, I'm looking for interesting people. I try to make uh, my event for a cause because I, I, I was like embarrassed, like 15, because we're bookers, right? Like we're, we get everyone to come and um, from out of town. And, it, you know, we should use this power to help people. We've usually done, done it for veterans. Um, ep epilepsy once, uh, maternal mortality. And I think this year, maybe humanitarian aid for Ukraine, something like that. Um, because I think, you know, we want to focus people on how they can make a difference. And you're allowed to that weekend, right? Because you're not, it's not about journalism per se. Thank you. Thanks for great questions.